What's up everybody, I'm Sendai Mike, I'm a mixing engineer, I work with vocalists, and today we're going to talk about how to find the tempo of a beat or a song using Ableton, and this is something that can be a little bit tricky um, if you don't take care of a few things first, um, and we're going to walk through that here. So I'm just going to grab a random beat from my from my downloads folder here, uh, let's see what we got, this is just a kind of a random, random beat here. Uh, Let's see. So the first thing we want to do after we bring the beat in is if it's an MP3, it's going to have a little bit of space at the very beginning of it. And we want to trim that out because of the way MP3s get rendered, they come with a little bit of air there. So if you've downloaded a beat off of YouTube or if you're working with something that was rendered as an MP3, you're going to want to just trim that out so that the song starts right when the sound begins. And if you don't do that, then even if you get the tempo right, the clicking of the metronome is going to be off and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit here after we get the tempo dialed in. So let's just listen to the beat here and, and try and get a feel for how fast it is. Okay, so I'm going to tap along here with that and I'm going to listen here and then I'm going to tap. So I tapped along a few times just to see how, how, how it would go and that got us close. Let's listen to it with the metronome now. You can hear it's, it's, it's close but it's dragging a little bit. So I'm going to take a look at the waveform here. And this right here, this kick sound right here, that's the downbeat, right? And so we want that downbeat to be lining up with the grid. And so typically, if you know, if you know, if you're looking up here, you know, there's eight bars and then the ninth bar. And I'm, I'm guessing here that this is supposed to come in right at the ninth bar. So you want to line that transient up right with the ninth bar, but you don't want to drag the beat to do that. If we just change the tempo now, if we move the tempo up, you'll see the grid change around the beat. So I'm moving the, the tempo up. You know, if I, if I move the tempo up and down, it's going to change where the beat falls in the grid. So if I move it right here, it looks like that transient lines up right at the ninth bar. And now let's listen. So we're right on the money, 95 BPM. Now, going back to that little thing about the bit of silence if you don't trim that bit of silence out oh and i'll bring it back here so we can see right now the silence is back at the beginning even if we get the tempo right to 95 and we just drag this beat in listen listen to how it sounds with the metronome now you know it's kind of skipping on the upbeat because the metronome isn't hitting with with the downbeats of the beat so it's really important to trim out that air uh it, it Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to find the actual tempo. Now, there's a couple situations that can come up when you're trying to find the tempo of a beat. And sometimes the intro isn't an even number of bars or even an even number of beats. In which case, before you find the tempo, you'll want to trim your beat to the first downbeat. Bring it to the front of the Ableton project so that the first downbeat starts and then do the same thing where you find the beat and just you know, make sure it lines up with the grid. Now, the other sort of problem that comes up when trying to find the BPM of a beat is when you get beats that aren't at an even interval BPM. So it's like maybe maybe this one was 95.5 or something. And that, that presents a new issue. So I'm gonna drag in, I think I've got a beat here that's an uneven, uh, an uneven tempo. Uh, we'll have to check here. Uh, I think this is this one is though. So let's just listen to this. Okay. So first things first, we're gonna trim out the air at the beginning, right? And then I'm gonna tap to find the approximate tempo. So I'm gonna listen. And I'm gonna tap this. I'm gonna tap this one double time. Double time will give us higher resolution in the BPM, so. So, let's see here. We've got it, we've got it close, and we'll play it back with the tempo. It's not quite. 
quite, but judging you know by this, it looks like the sixteenth bar here is uh, the where the end of that is where this kick should be hitting right at the seventeenth bar. And so a kind of rule of thumb that you can that you can keep in mind is that musical arrangement, especially in hip hop, is not always as oftentimes it's powers of two. So two to the second power is four, two to the third power is eight. Two to the fourth power is 16, which is why you have like eight bar loops and 16 bar verses and eight bar bridges and all that business. So right here, you know, we've got 16 bars and then the kick should hit. So let's let's adjust the tempo accordingly. And it looks like here I'm at 148 and the kick is coming in just a little bit before that grid line. And if I go to 149, it's coming a little bit after. So if that's the case, you know. 149 is too fast. 148 is too slow. So this this is when you have to start doing this sort of iterative process. And I'm going to go and try 148.5. See if that gets us closer. Now that's a little bit closer, but it's still a little bit off. So let's try 148.25. Cut that in half. Now that's a little bit too early. Now you can see it's it's just before the grid now. And I'll play that back and you, it'll be very, very little, but it sounds it's close, but it's a little bit fast. And you'll see if you set that, if you look at the end here, that sort of accumulates up uh, till at the end, it'll be much more off. I mean, it's still pretty close though. But if you're really trying to get this dialed in perfectly, because you know, sometimes we just have to get it perfect. Um, we're going to we're going to just try iterating a few more times. So let's try 148.3 maybe 148.31 uh 148.31 that that looks pretty darn close. Let's check it at the end though to make sure as well because you always want to check later on because if it's off at the beginning a little bit it might be more off at the end and it looks like it's a little bit still at the end it's it the, the downbeats are coming in a little bit before the grid um so we could maybe even try a little bit more 148.32 and that's that's right around as, as about as close as it's going to get it looks like so let's just play it back here at the end with the metronome and the beginning to make sure we're all straight and this is really important because you know the, it's a small difference right but say if you record a hook over this portion and you had the tempo set to 148.3 instead of 148.32, and then you copied that hook over here with the grid, you're gonna be just a little bit off, right? So that's why it's really important to get it as close as possible. So for whatever arrangement stuff you're doing later down the road after recording, everything stays lined up and you don't have to, um, you know, fuck around with nudging things at all. Um, that's that's about it. Please let me know if you have any questions or if I could clarify. I'm just going to run through a couple of these more and you can see sort of the the, the practice of it. Um, you know, like it's once you get uh, once you get into it, it, it can go pretty quickly. Um, let me just find a good uh, find a good beat here to use. Let's look at this one. So let's trim out the air. You know, if you do this enough, you'll get very quick at it. And it, at the beginning, it might be frustrating, but uh, please, please let me know if you're having any troubles figuring this out. Um, it's definitely worth doing before you start recording or um, doing any arranging is getting the tempo just right. So hit me up if you have any questions. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see any other topics covered. Um, I'll be trying to do these longer videos at least once a week here moving forward. Thanks. I'll catch you next time.